Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special year-end edition of the PC Perspective Podcast. That's right, 2022 has come and gone. And by the time you're listening to this, it'll be, you know, Christmas, and and then it'll be New Year's, and then we'll be back after a short break. But just watch this over and over and over again until then. I'm Sebastian Peake. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrus. I'm Brett Van Spruenberg. And I'm Kent Burgess. Uh, Duke is going to be uh, a uh, A strong, uh, silent type. You can support Mm. the site and podcast distribution by going to patreon.com slash PC per help us keep the lights on and bring us back. Bring us back for 2023. PC per 2023. We're announcing our uh, candidacy right now for uh, maintaining operation for another year with your help. uh, More of a fun drive, I think, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Or a threat. <laughs> Josh, did you uh, have any exciting lunch exploits to report on? Oh, yeah. This is the... Uh, let me get my phone here real quick so I can read this. And as you can tell, I'm growing even more chins. And it's all because of this damn place. So today's monstrosity. See, the guy is going through like a 50 states burger special. So each state has its own kind of unique burger to its geographic location. And and this one tonight is, I believe, Wisconsin. And it's it's the butter burger. The butter burger is a double patty drenched. And I mean drenched with seasoned butter, cheddar cheese, and thin sliced white onions, only ten ninety nine, and well, that's that's a pretty good deal in these days for a double butter burger. And right now my arteries are screaming for mercy as I fast for the next forty eight hours because that's just too many calories, and I need to go into some ketoacidosis to break up the break up the plaques in my arteries and it just I'm a foolish man I need to do better we all need to do better our top story is AMD Ryzen rumors now I saw 7900 and I thought it was graphics but no this is the 7900 processor and also yes. 7700 and 7600 which will also eventually be graphics cards so that'll be even more confusing but the Odd. non-X, it's coming. Rumors about a potential Ryzen 7000 uh, and their pricing. Now, this is apparently a uh, an actual slide with prices. And it looks like $229 will be the non-X variant of the 7600. And then you have the 7700 non-X for 329 and the 7900 non-X at a tempting 429 Ooh, the price wars continue between AMD and Intel, it looks like. Clearly, they're anticipating Intel's very, very soon release of their 13th you know, gen series. Yeah, and the non- sensing the pressure. K. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, look, it'll come the with coolers. 13.4. It's like a, a blast from the past, buying a Ryzen processor with a cooler in the box. So it's the, the 7600 is... 20 bucks less expensive than a 7600X. Huh. Yeah. That's not much. Yeah. No. But you get a cooler, which is probably a, you know, a 10 to $15 value, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I guess. Okay, $20 value. Inflation. <laughs> You're saving even more money. You have to spend uh, money want, to save money sometimes. What we want is the most yeah, there, the more you buy. for the dollar. <laughs> the more you the buy, the more you save. save. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No. Hey, what? Huh? You know, looking at that, the AMD site, they still have 7900 XT graphics in stock. They did raise the price of the 5800 X3D to 379 from 329. Oh, did they? On the official site they did? Mm -hmm. Josh, you know that the 7900 XT has about as much appeal as the, you know, RTX 4080. Maybe... Maybe about the same or more. Maybe, yeah, yeah, but yeah. just slightly more. 
Yeah. Where's the? How do you do direct by? Is it direct by? E N. What? So it's it's slash E N. Okay. For light language. Slash direct. Uh, hyphen. By. Okay. Slash. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Here we go. Holiday deals. I know we're off topic here, but seven hundred XT is in stock. It's in stock. You can buy a seven hundred XT, the card everyone's talking about, for just eight ninety nine. Mm, the are XTX. they talking about it though? No. Are Look they? at those bundles. The bundles are bundles good. better. They they are talking about it, but not in a positive way. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, well. No XDX bundle, so. Uh, every once in a while, there's a stinker. By the way, this 6950 XT reminds me that uh, our 6950 XT from AMD finally showed up today. Now, that's slightly... I, slightly, I assume it's an AMD card. No. It's not a, par- third, no, it's oh, a it's partner, partner card. Uh, it, oh, it was who's? just a little too late for the 7800 review that they send it for. <laughs> but it was who's, one of those things where it was... It? It's Asus. It's the tough. Oh. oh, okay. All right. There was a tapping. Yes, and the tapping appears to be gone now. That's good. It was Santa Claus. Oh, okay. It might have been Duke. Up on the rooftop. No, oh, it's kind it's of back again. again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back to AMD processor pricing. So the X3D. Oh, the X3D is back to three seventy nine. Josh was right. But at least That's, you can buy it. Well, fifty bucks. Was, well, yeah. three twenty nine was gonna touch pretty on darn that. aggressive. That I was. do like the new low price for the fifty seven hundred G. That's way better at one ninety nine than it was before. Yeah, but the G part of it is kind of falling off the curve of getting well, a lot of use out of it anymore Vega. it's still yeah. Vega. hey mature driver support because it's the same gpu as the 3400 g was actually uh-huh yeah pretty much exactly the same mm-hmm. but the cpu cores are better so uh how about that pricing <clears throat> yeah if you look at the current pricing out there for the 7000 series stuff, the new non X looks less compelling because the X stuff is selling for such drastic discounts, which will probably go away when the non X comes and slots in at those lower prices. But anyway, buy now, buy now, buy as much as you can. The more you buy, the more you will save. I think should you even buy though, or should you just get that 5800 X3D? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be talking about tariffs at all, but that's been delayed, so there's no reason to... There's no immediate reason to buy now, except there is, because all of these sort of residual Black Friday deals are going to be going going bye-bye. Is that official, or just something you think? I'm just just talking out of my butt, I don't know. Well, no, because you've got Boxing Day coming up, so you've got to get rid of the Black Friday deals. Okay, so you think it'll be a January of sales, and then maybe February... Yeah, Boxing Month, you know. I, I, I think there's a few there's a few weeks left of good deals. So if you've got the dollars, take take advantage we just need of to, Canadian uh, Copex. Uh, we need to find somebody who's really unlucky, so we have them buy now, so that then the prices will go down again. Ooh, mm. Mm. like Leah. I'm sorry, my mm. credit is maxed. I, I can't. Oh, I was going to say if I could afford it, I would. And no. Yeah, it's it's that time of year where pretty much everything is gone. Damn. The money is gone. The sales are there, out. and everybody's tapped out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason it's I, red I've and green. I've been watching a lot of pricing. I mean, processors uh, have have had some good pricing on them, but even last generation graphics cards, the prices have gone back up somewhat on mm-hmm. those. Um, it, there's not a lot of great deals out there. Monitors have actually gone up in the last couple of months. Um, I, I not, actually not the one, one I chose. Well, oh. is, it, is it the <laughs> traditional monitor pick of the week? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I almost wonder because, you know, of the economy overall this Christmas, if we're going to see a lot of post Christmas sales, on some of this stuff and see things come even lower. Like 48. I don't know. On the AMD side, the 6600s and the 6700 video cards have all continuously just dropped in price. Yeah. So you can, you can consistently find a sale on, on one of those multiple models. And yeah, the 6700 is a great deal for, I guess I saw one going for 350. 
I saw one for three fifty nine today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good sale. So that's last that's year bucking that, the trend. But ooh, otherwise, Warburg. getting getting a three thousand series above a thirty sixty, they're both those prices all creeping up. You, hard to get mm-hmm. a hold of an RTX thirty eighty, and uh, much less anything higher than that. And, and those, you know, a thirty ninety was what it dropped below a thousand bucks, and now you can't find you those can't deals. Get- you guys, you guys sold a, me on an A770 last week. Now you're talking about Radeon graphics again. Come on, Josh. 349, 16 <laughs> gigs of memory. Talking about Spy. RTXs. I know, I know, and and it's only going to get better month on month and more Sebastian, rare. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing where that 6950 falls on your your latest testing scenario. Is is you know is it still worth it? Especially yeah, as it approaches. Yeah. Flirts with that seven hundred dollar number, and uh, you know, Micro Center, it's mid sevens right now, seven eighty. I haven't, Ooh, yeah. I haven't opened the box yet, and I can confidently mm-hmm. say that it's a great value at seven ninety nine. Just the way it slots <laughs> in in my mind is, yeah, because <laughs> it's seven. Just look at it on paper: seventy nine hundred XT, underwhelming. Seventy nine fifty XT. Wait, no, sixty nine fifty. Sixty nine fifty. It's a sixty nine fifty. There's no unreleased graphics cards from AMD here right now yep yep all right uh speaking of amd ryzen 7 5800x 3d we've all talked about it we talked about it this show already it's up to 379 but it's still a good deal at that price it's one of the fastest gaming chips ever made by man on earth and then the ryzen (laughs) 5 7600x less exciting less expensive more expensive platform more expensive total cost of ownership DDR5. Other buzzwords. This is at Tech Spot. This is their big 50 plus game roundup. Very nice mm-hmm. photo here of the uh, Ryzen 7600X in an X670E motherboard. And uh, let's get into the benchmarks because this is pretty interesting. It's, uh, to, I'll just spoil it. It's not as clear cut as one might hope it to be because not every game is going to take as much advantage of all that cash. <laughs> that that Canadian cache. Where is the big long graph with all the games? Come on, Tech Spot. It's got to be well, you click one. one by one. You're not one even halfway one. down. Is it somewhere? Is there the overall average? Keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep going. I'm, bored. Okay. I'm reading them as you go, as you fly by. Oh, here you go. Okay. okay. Ryzen 7 5800X 3D versus the 7600X at 1080p. It's 4% slower on average. Then what? Then it's so the the X three D is four percent slower on average than the seventy six hundred X. It's a circular firing squad. It's it's you know compared to it, it's it's competition in this test. But which one is is which? Where's the because there's this side of it and this side of it, but they're not labeled. One has to assume that the X three D is on the left because it's titled seventy six hundred X. Yeah, I, I would. I put in a error label your there. axes, kids. Yeah, come on. All right, point scored on that. You guys are right. Okay, and then the other one says it's three percent slower on average at fourteen forty p. So I'm guessing again that means the fifty eight hundred X three D. But there are some games where it's it's faster. So yeah. here it is slower starting at a uh, PUBG one percent. When you get into the ones, that's margin of error, basically. But the yeah. Nature 3, minus 2, Dying Light, Doom Eternal, minus 2, Metro Exodus. But like a 5% and up, that's certainly going to be yeah. noticeable. But if you play F122, which is a DX title, I'm sorry, which is a DirectX 12 title, that's a newer game, uh, 7% higher. Yeah. Wait, no, that's the 7600X. You know... Does the hundred dollar roughly which... price difference I think, okay. between these so I, yeah, make I think it the worth left, it? The the stuff going to the left is is where the seventy six hundred does well, but oh, uh, but I mean uh, going to the right, but all the all the left hand stuff well, was fifty eight hundred. It says right there the fifty eight hundred X three D was three percent slower on average. Okay, all right. Oh. So the mystery has been solved. Thank you, Jeremy, for reading Read the text. It's reading is hard. <laughs> I know. Uh, Oh, all the words. With the all the words. What we read learned, all the words. What we learned. Uh, the X 3D is very impressive for a previous gen CPU that can be had for less than three hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, thank you. I yeah, but so once you tally up the AM5 and the DDR5 and the PCIe4, exactly. and exactly because that yeah. that is the problem. 
is that we still don't have those hundred dollar halfway decent budget motherboards yet. Hundred and fifty dollar even. And then memory's expensive. Wait, so you can eke this much performance out on only DDR four? Who knew? Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah exactly. Weird. Hmm. Weird. Who knew that outside of hmm. uh, memory intensive hmm. benchmark workloads? Memory, I mean it's it's you fast mean fake enough. Fake fluffing work workloads, now, is that what you're saying? I, I want to add something I, that's here. That's what I heard. That's I what I heard. I want to add something. I don't want to sound snarky, but <laughs> Tech Spot, all their X3D tests are with DDR4-3200, as far as I know. Mm. And you want to pair that with 3600, which would give you a nice little performance uplift. Not just a memory bandwidth increase. It actually lets the like clock a five percent increase yeah. performance overall. Which, it's insane. Which yeah. is yeah. the difference between the two in their charts yeah. overall? So I, I just I want to do this myself. I haven't yet. I finally did buy an X three D because they were three twenty nine, but I have not put it into my B five fifty motherboard and done new benchmarks on it yet. Because it's graphics card season, and that's what I've been doing with my time. But as soon as it's going to be CES s- season, you got a sixty nine fifty, yeah. and Lisa Sue's going to open up CES. You know, you'll, you'll be riveted to that. I hope she doesn't announce any new GPUs. Oh, hmm. yeah, I sure. Lo- lower stack. Mm-hmm. Just one stack. more thing. Yeah, one more thing. All the non X CPUs and a new GPU. And what's with it, companies reusing their n- numeric naming, even in the same similar generation, like you just pointed out, CPU 7600, 7600? Because it doesn't happen. matter anymore. I guess it just doesn't uh, matter. No. It confuses people. It's awful. Well, people look at the price it. and they know automatically what generation it is. That's true. All Josh right. makes a great All point. The gen- <laughs> the, wait, so what you're saying is I could list my old stuff online for sale somewhere and just make it really expensive so people just assume oh that's the new gen he's not selling Something a like se- that, yeah i have a um 7970 gigahertz edition i could sell that for 1500 and say look it's the new 7970 it's 70 more and i'll just put an xtx at the end of it Oh, you yeah. guys didn't yeah. watch. Get some you guys didn't watch Steve Burke's Steve Burke's video yet on the weighting oh, of how things are named. I watched it. <laughs> In fact, that was my. I think I Steve does a great job. Obviously, the, the whole team over there. Mm-hmm. But this latest review where he was overseas and he's outside with this clear umbrella in the rain. He's, that was, he's always in that alley. <laughs> that was adorable. Like the 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 rain softly falling. You could hear it hitting the people walking umbrella. by. Yeah, people in soft focus behind him. That was artistic. Yeah. That took tech, the talking head videos to another level. It was, uh, it was cinematic. That's it awesome. had a sense of realism. Slide, Sebastian, not we're not taking found. the podcast outside. Oh, I really? All right. <laughs> not tonight. Okay. In your snow bank. It's really cold. <laughs> it's but it would be, cold. actually the lighting would be decent because of all the reflections off of the white snow. Oh, it'd be very bright. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, smart access memory. Is our next story. How smart is smart access memory? Sam with Navi 31. The FPS review wants to know. Because yeah. everyone testing? enabled Sam and right, boom, right. away you go. Well, why would they do that? Maybe because it has a significant impact on performance. <laughs> or they did, and I mean, even they did this, of course, on a pure AMD system. Technically, you right. should be able to do almost as good with rebar on an Intel system with an AMD graphics card, but you are losing out a bit because AMD did have some special sauce to add to their SAM. And yeah, I mean, at 4K, you're looking at 10 frames a second easily. And if you bring FSR or, or, or FSR2, if the game supports it into it, it becomes an immense difference. So, you know, Call of Duty, uh, and this is mostly almost at 4K, F1, you know, again, there's just a huge difference. Uh, The 1440s, yeah, I mean, it's bigger, but then again, you're talking about the difference between 260 frames and 280. Good luck trying to spot the difference on that. But overall, you know, it just, Sam is good. It does exactly what it says it's going to. Uh, Some of the ray trace games, of course, you're not going to see as big of a change yeah. but that's more the ray tracing 
Dying Light 2 at 4K goes from an unplayable, you know, 32 to 53.6 with FSR 2, whereas it's still below 50 uh, with Sam off. So it makes a lot of sense. But Yeah, it's, it's free performance. It's one of those tweaks where yeah. if you have this hardware, you owe it to yourself to go into the software, make sure it's enabled, set rebar on in your, in your BIOS. Yeah, and a higher than 4G encoding. And away you go. You're laughing. 7 to 10%. But it also, this review shows that, uh, yeah, that XT versus the XTX. You get a lot of money, a lot of bang for that extra buck for that extra X. Yeah. And I I just do not see buying the XT unless it was seven ninety nine. This is not in an AMD story, not an NVIDIA story, not even Intel. But it, it does involve Weird. a GPU and gaming. <laughs> It's a gaming keyboard, hear me out, that has its own GPU, and it runs Unreal Engine in a keyboard. Crazy talk. <laughs> you know, everybody's been clamoring for, for you know, the backlit screen GPU yeah. keyboard, and it's finally Sight's here. Sight's too low. <laughs> $350. Uh, so it's, it's probably not an M1 in there. No, but it's... But, <laughs> you, like you can... Unreal works on mobile devices, so I'm thinking Snapdragon level. Okay, so... I think that makes sense. Yeah, by GPU, you mean, like, you know, phone GPU. But nothing yeah. wrong with that. It's just running a keyboard. Uh, if you click through the that? register, you can watch their little promo video. Oh, Gator on switches, so, I see. Yeah. Custom ones. Uh, and, of yeah. course, the, the keycaps are completely transparent, and they've moved the... Uh, the the lab, or sorry the labeling of the keys to the front of the key so that it doesn't interrupt. Oh, okay. okay. The subtitle of this post, the register is, at $349, it's a cheap computer and a not very expensive keyboard. Isn't that sad? That oh, $350 I, yeah, a, they consider not very expensive? Well, you can barely get a set of keycaps for that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like the, Sadly. The, keyboard, the keyboard people are the computer equivalent yeah. of the audiophile community who buys like $4,000 interconnect cables. and yes. Yeah, let's talk about the cable. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yes. How many keyboards does Wasson have now? I don't. More than he who has, Sebastian has cases. 100 at least. I don't know. <laughs> I would challenge Scott to a duel in the case versus keyboard department, but. I, I, you might lose at this point. Okay. All right. Does he have more he than is... like 50 or 60 keyboards? Actually, probably yes. Probably yes, yes, he does. On one shelf. How, but do, I probably have more cases than Wendell has um, IBM Model M keyboards. Probably. Probably, sure, yeah. I'm not sure, though. I think he has an entire wall of those somewhere. Uh, I think you have more cases. What's okay. this video? Oh, do you must full screen not available? Yeah. It's weird. Oh. Uh, it's just somebody typing What's, a it's, keyboard. Is this yeah. aluminium as well? I would assume so. The flyover the sword shot. carbon. Yeah, yeah. This Come on, boys, get to work. It. Come on, mm, just show me so features. Much shadow. Final mouse, laminated display laminated circuit, display. glass stack. Two patents. The With centerpiece is pure magic to behold. What is this German engineering now? I thought well, you said like a Johnny this, Ive thing. I really wasn't sure where I was going with it. So that would be easy to type on, wouldn't it? Yeah, it looks great. Not, Not distracting all distracting. All. Hey, look, it's a shoe I ad easily... on my keyboard while I'm pl trying to play a game. It's the next gaming challenge. Finish doing it while playing, yeah. oh, watching yes. it on the keyboard you're playing it on. Well, if you should be playing in real, though. Need to look down, if you ever need to look down to find a key, you're Kent done. It has YouTuber <laughs> in his blood. That that would be, put the right thumbnail on that video concept, 6 million views. Yep. Immediately. Apparently it does ship with a game that just runs on the keyboard itself and reacts to your key presses. Of course. Of course. But uh, I don't know. It's it's a mad, 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 mad world. For the people who were missing one more avenue to multitask, this is for you. But look at the the patterns and the colors and it's RGB, man. It's, oh, of it's course the you next can run on the keyboard, RGB. Gavin. Or she can run Doom on the keyboard and just the keyboard alone. Yeah, and play it too. That's hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
I wonder what the resolution of that screen is. Yep. It's optical, so it doesn't really count. Oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, let us... ADHD. Let's pause right now for a word from this week's first podcast sponsor. We can all understand the many situations that get in the way of your workplace productivity. It happens all too often. For many professionals, some of that can be repetitive typing or other boring tasks that waste far too much of your valuable time. Think of how many hours you spend responding to similar questions over and over in email and chat, then digging through your file sharing platforms looking to track down the correct email template, and then carefully personalizing that reply to make sure your message is both targeted and authentic. Well, Text Expander is your new answer to eliminating that repetition. Text Expander's powerful shortcuts and abbreviations streamline your work, so all you have to do is type a short abbreviation, and Text Expander does the rest of the work for you. Create text templates and insert them anywhere you type with just a few keystrokes. Here's how it works. Drop your commonly used content into Text Expander's app and give it an abbreviation. Add customizations like today's date or fill in the blank fields, timestamps, and more to make content feel totally personalized. Then all you have to do is type a few characters to expand your content or do a quick search to access it wherever you type. And that's just the beginning of how Text Expander will impact your team's productivity. Show listeners get 20% off their first year at textexpander.com slash pcper. That's textexpander.com slash pcper. Go check it out. We're back and we're going to look at a story about a webcam. What could be more exciting or topical than that? Because I mean, we're doing a video podcast recording here with webcams. Using using webcams, In most fact, of us. they're from Logitech. Yep. Tell me about this. Well, I can tell you that uh, the C920 and 922s that we like got honorable mentions, and that was it. Oh. Creative Live uh, Cam Sync 1080p V2. It's $30. Because it's, it's 30 bucks. <clears throat> I mean, you're going to do 30 frames a second, but you're going to do 1080, and a 77-degree field of view is not bad. Uh, you'll be shocked to hear that the mic on it isn't great, but, uh, I mean, what, what else is new? Using that, yeah. Oh, ne- never use that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's pretty awful, and like, so like, and then one of the smart things is each one of them has like a fifteen second clip of uh, her the the gal we're doing the review, all on that webcam. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, I, so, yeah not using the mic. I hope. Yeah. Oh, why not? Mm, I don't think so. Ah, uh, because no see, one likes see, like, the 90s conference room the lighting. <laughs> yeah. So this is the thirty dollar one. This is what it looks like. That's not. That's not bad. That's not bad. No, no it's not bad at all. all. It's like a laptop webcam. Yeah, except you can position it where you want it to. Right. So it's not looking up your nose, which is always yeah. good. Yes. So How you boys like Nick's ago? <laughs> <laughs> this one looks I'm not even sure why that was funny. Rest. I don't I don't understand that one. Have, <laughs> the, the, the have you not watched Super out Troopers? Lights on them. <laughs> I think oh, yeah. I did, but I don't remember that. How but I think they're selling on the you boys like Mexico, but you know. Yes, but okay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to go. So they, they go through a couple of them. Uh, the anchor. I mean, yeah. It, it, I think anyone who's been in a conference room has dealt with one of the anchors before. Uh, it, it goes up to a 60 frames per second at 1080p, but don't guarantee that it's going to stick there. But the one that, at the end that they picked is like the best one. It just baffles me. Huh. The, the Logitech Mevo Start. It's 350 bucks, or for 950 you can get a three-pack because you can chain the three of them together. What? But, I mean, at that price, at 350 bucks, no. you can no. get proper stuff. Like, it's got a Sony sensor in it, can get a- so it's decent, but you could get, like, a, 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 a mirrorless one that would be so much better for that sort of price. Yeah, Clark and it, Kent uh, from the channel, from the chat says, just get a GoPro. Oh, for yeah. bucks. Yeah. Less than 400 yeah. bucks. Get a GoPro. The get only... a GoPro 10. Get a GoPro 9. Yeah. Or uh, go with <sighs> a, a newer one that's used and not by someone who got an avalanche or anything. But the um, other thing that baffles me. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Is that it's got a micro SD card slot in it. So you can record whatever you're doing on your webcam, which is by definition attached to a computer that could be recording what you're doing on the webcam. It, it adds flexibility. Okay. It makes it GoPro-esque. So. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll give you that. 
strap it to a Hot Wheels car, make it go down a track. Does it do high speed recording for slow mo or no? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, screw that. Who cares? No, it does. Uh, and it also does 30 frames. Side story. There is actually a Hot Wheels card that was designed to accommodate a the small. Yes, there was. Yeah, yeah like, it's got a flatbed thing on it. Actually, the last time I was at Walgreens, yeah. uh, they had one in stock. I have a couple of them around here mm. somewhere. The cars, the Hot Wheels cars, still in box. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Moving and on to Hero Five. Powerful anyway, on. story in the tech world. It's actually about power. It's the Thermal Take Tough Power GF3. This is not just your average power supply. This is. Is this the latest standard? Is it the new? As I wait for this page to load, HX. It's V3 and PCIe 5 ready, which means. And it ships with a 12 plus 4. Nice. Got the 12 volt high power on deck. Yeah. 600 watts of power for your GPU of choice from NVIDIA. Well, 450. Oh, it's a 450. Well, I mean, if you include the, uh, the slot too. But yeah, their their cable is rated up to 450. But I mean, oh. 999.6 watts at 83.5 amps on a single 12 volt is not too shabby. Because the thing is, kilowatt supply power supplies are back. Remember just a couple of years ago when everyone was on, you know, power efficiency and you could run a high-end system on like a 600 watt power supply? Yeah, no, those were nice days. Sorry. Of course, we have to have some ARC news, but this is sort of indirectly ARC news, although there's supposed to be more it's architect ARC. news. Yes. So Intel has broken up their graphics group. Raja has moved back to the chief architect role. Some of these headlines are calling it a demotion. I don't know how that actually works. Um, data center and gaming have been split into two groups. Previously, which didn't really make a lot of sense, there was this separate AXG group that handle all graphics but now there's going to be consumer and enterprise so data center i'll be honest though i'm i really hope that they keep with it because it's it's nice having a third option you know in this uh, the the uh alchemist line it's not great but it's not bad for a first first run Um, and you know, it still offers some compelling reasons for the price for the, the 770 limited with the 16 gigs. Um, it's not quite up to 6,700 XT standard in normal rasterization, but in ray tracing, it actually surpasses it. Um, again, not quite as good as uh, a 3060 with that. Um, but again, that's their first outing i am sort of excited to see what they do with this next batch Mm -hmm. the actual design i think is pretty good and it's pretty powerful and it has a lot of good things going for it but again it's just being held back by software we've we've seen in some you know benchmarks where they've really focused on on getting that stuff uh, improved you know it's it's got kind of compelling performance for the price and uh the feature set is is second to none i mean you've got the uh, ab1 encode right yeah yes yes yeah yes. and uh and support for it some know, applications and it's yeah it's a useful device it is and you know it's it's not bad it just the drivers don't like to cooperate and for example if the machine goes to sleep for a while Sometimes the video card just doesn't wake up. Oh, well. Sleep mode sucks, but it does for you a lot of test things. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to our security corner now. Microsoft writes uh, this author at Bleeping Computer finds macOS bug that lets malware bypass security checks. Well, I mean, it happens to everybody. I'm sure. I wonder what circumstances this is uh, under. Well, so with Gatekeeper, it's a you know obviously a security feature that's supposed to check all the apps as they're downloaded, and you know they're supposed to be properly signed and you know, by Apple. But apparently, there's a, a way around their ACLs, their access control list, that um, something to do with zip archives. And I, I'm, the most amusing part of this to me is that Microsoft found a problem in Apple's macOS. So, yeah, that's um, it's just not a good look. I, and it's a zero day, of course, remote code execution. Mm. So that's especially bad. 
I'm sorry, Jeremy, you, you found this one. So. Yep. Well, it, when it was amusing and I like how they called it Achilles. But well, if you can't oh, trust your ackles, funny. who can you? Who can mm-hmm. you trust? Because yeah, Achilles ackle, it's 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 well named. There's the a next. patch out, so if you're running a Mac, patch. Yes, if you're running a Mac, like most, do stories. what Apple says and just always up download every update, including OS updates, and then they hide the old OS updates. So you can't even download them again. And mm-hmm. yes. Well, that's because you just realized it crippled your battery and you need to go back to the old one. <laughs> or it made it so you couldn't mm-hmm. run that, that application that you need. And it's like, oh, yeah. well, sorry, it's not it's not supported by this new operating system. It was 32 bit. Yes, but Microsoft, Microsoft, as usual, is not immune. So next up, teed up. Microsoft pushes emergency fix for Windows Server Hyper-V VM issues. I did not read this one, so I don't. I don't know this one. Jeremy might know this one, though. Who me <laughs> or not? What? I was yes. on mute because I was laughing at the uh, supposed Titan. I didn't see the Photoshop picture until now, and it's just brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's essentially when you're trying to create a brand new VM uh, or attach uh, virtual NICs, uh, you, you just sort of just doesn't want to do it. Uh, it's they, 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 they've paired this because there's also one on the desktop, which is causing blue screens, uh, right, left, right, and center, which is amazing. So they put this, this uh, out of band like this late when, I mean, first off, what are you doing setting up new VMs at this point? You're in your change freeze. Don't, unless you're really looking for an excuse to be hiding from the family on the 25th as you're up using someone Wi-Fi to try and fix something remotely. I so, read that too. Yeah, just don't. Yeah, it's just, it's true though. Uh, so yeah, don't patch right now. Don't do anything right now, for Christ's sakes. If you've yeah, installed it, do with the out of band. Don't try and uh, go back because that will also make things upset. So yeah, but it, it serves you right for trying to patch or build up, spin out new things during this change freeze. Can we talk about a ghost in the shell of the keyboard? The Corsair K100 keyboard. What is this story about, Jeremy? Not the Air, though. Not okay. the Air, just the K100. So it's, it's a take it with a grain of salt because this is like random uh, forum thread. But uh, there is some people did show it. So someone was using one of these, and all of a sudden it just started typing out a whole bunch of text on its own while the guy wasn't touching it. And he realized. This was a paragraph and a half of something which he had entered in like a week before and it, it came back. Someone else says that, yeah, in one case, it just keeps coming back with text from a really sensitive email that it just keeps spitting out in the middle of stuff. Uh, and That's so exciting. they've been fooling around. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. So they've I, been. <laughs> especially if you're writing work email and then. Uh huh. And all of a sudden, just at the bottom, search result starts uh, appearing in the middle of your. Ooh, that could great. be embarrassing. Yeah. And, and so they've gone as far as to like unplug the keyboard, try and do the reset, and it keeps happening, which is kind of creepy because the theory is uh, that this has a, ma- a fairly comprehensive macro recording feature to it. Yeah. And there was a Logitech keyboard that did this many years back. And so it just sort of all of a sudden the macro would get, macro recording would get hit. But why it's able to record paragraphs worth of text and keystrokes as opposed to, you know, just, you know, 10 or 15 is a very good question. So Coursera says, no, it's not a keylogger. We, we promise it's uh, something to do with the macro. Here's a fix. It'll probably fix it. And since then, the thread's been updated with one person that says, yeah, it totally didn't fix it. And it still does things. <laughs> How so, yeah. Uh, I think before you buy it. already have like built in memory. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, a, a lot of their more advanced keyboards have a real-time operating system called Axiom that's on them now, yes. and, which has its own memory system, its own uh, processes, its own memory management. So I can see where this there's space for this to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but it does, there is. It does seem kind I, of unusual. I, it seems to, like, you want to put a limit on how much of a macro you can record. Or mm-hmm. do you want to take this car, this uh, thing into your next exam? 
So you can just plug it in and it'll <laughs> fill in all of your study notes automatically. <laughs> so you want to take advantage of the keyboard memory at that point. Hey, uh, if it's going to do it, you might as well use it for evil. Hmm. Yeah, use this is one evil. of those that has the 8 megahertz polling rate. You can't do that without the, the extra hardware. They have the processor and yeah. all that stuff. Well, and you'd have to have a high-end processor to handle that too. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's uh, some sort of highly tuned version of Linux, I, I believe, you know, or Linux-like operating system. But yeah, it's mm-hmm. called Axiom or Axios. I think it's Axiom. In one of the yeah. two. All right, let's pause once again for our second and final podcast sponsor this week. Have you ever been surprised to find a semi-mysterious charge on your bank account or credit card statement only to suddenly realize that you actually did sign up for something? That's money you've already spent on something you didn't use. Could be the local gym, a lawn care service for a place you don't live at anymore, or more likely some sort of online content access you're not using. Hulu? Prime? Some random news site? How much are these unwanted subscriptions really costing you? This is where Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, can really help you out and take control. This app shows you all your subscriptions in one place and can cancel the ones you don't want. Simple. Aw, yeah. Rocket Money might even find ones you've been double charged for. Nice. No longer want a subscription? Press that cancel button on the app and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash pcperspective. Seriously, this could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash PC perspective. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash PC perspective. We're back and we're going to talk about games. It's our gaming quick hits. And the first one is free. We like that. It's thief like. It was made in a week. That that sounds scary. Well, I mean, it, it was part of 70 FPS, seven day first person shooter. Okay. So you have to make a fully functional first person shooter in a week. They did. I mean, it certainly looks like it. Uh, it's not exactly going to kill you with its uh, wonderful graphics. But uh, the idea is that you're, you're sneaking into a manor and you've got to steal like a, a crown, at least 200 gold, and then get out again. And you sneak around. So in this case, to distract people in this procedurally generated uh, game. So every time you play it, it's going to look different. And from what uh, RPS was saying, sometimes the way that the rooms stick together, because it's procedurally generated, so we know this one fits this, this, but it's a little bit odd how they do that. So that can be amusing. But to distract the guards, you flush toilets. Because, of course, why (laughs) wouldn't you? And so there's toilets strategically placed all over the place and you flush it and the guards will go and check it out so that you can sneak past them. Or you've got knocks uh, where you can sneak up and bang, knock the guard out. But you've got a limited amount of them. Uh, apparently there's ways to collect more as you're playing it if you want to be a little bit more direct. But it just sounds amusingly odd and the price, I mean, you can't go wrong. Yeah, it's based on the first, uh, um, what should we call it? The first <sighs> thief. Is it the first or second um, mission uh, in uh, Thief the Dark Project? Yes, that's the one. So it is based on that. That's why it's called Lil Taffer. Because yeah. the, 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 you know, when you call Garrett. somebody a Taffer, it's a bad name. You like your dipshit. Your Taffer. Yeah, look it up if you need to know. Yeah. Next up, uh, the Steam Holiday Sale or the Steam Winter Sale. Which is it? The Steam tomorrow. Oh, it starts tomorrow. It starts okay. tomorrow. I was going to say, I clicked on the link and it's just the regular Steam landing page, but <laughs> yeah, it's bad it's news not here for your yet, backlog. Yes, that's it right there. Okay. That's it. It's tomorrow. Fill your backlog with yeah. more games. Yeah. Or just avoid Steam like the plague. One of the two. Yeah. Mm, that's not our audience. I think our audience is I'm filling the backlog. I'm just not going to buy one, another game until I finish Skyrim. So there's two. That's a lie. That's a lie. You know you're lying. You know most Steam <laughs> only, libraries. I only I will only buy a new game for benchmarking purposes. <laughs> 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 I only ever see five minutes a game, but I've seen it a yep. lot. Uh, Steam libraries are like Facebook. You can scroll and scroll and scroll forever, and it's mostly mm-hmm. junk. But I mean, it's. They're cheap. It's junk you paid for. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, some of them look I, at it like, how did I even get this? It was part of a bundle or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I Why actually get this? went through my Steam library about six months ago and looked at every game on there, and it's like, will I ever play this? No. And I deleted a, a bunch of games from my Steam library did, because I knew I would never watch play that them. Japanese lady and say, you know, if, if you hold your Steam account well, in your hands and it doesn't bring you joy, it doesn't bring you joy, then just get rid of it. <laughs> Is that the clutter lady? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mo- moving on. Uh, Lego Builder's Journey. It's going to be the next free game from Epic Game Store. Not to be confused with Lego Brick Tales. This is something different. This looks like the instruction manual for a Lego building set. But it's a game. It does. And it's RT. Yeah, you, you jump around. It's pretty. Nice. Yep. Well, Legos and not Minecraft. Do they need RTX? Do Legos I mean, look need at RTX? The lighting, though. Do I they? Mean, I think it. Do does. They? I think everything does. The fog, oh. lighting, yeah. Everything it's great. needs to be yeah. fully path traced. Okay. All right. Let's make it happen. Broken Sword Director's Cut. Now I don't know when this <laughs> is uh, going to be off of giveaway, but right now it's on giveaway, and that means it's free. If you have an account at good old, what's this days. about? I I've never heard of this one. Neither have I. Oh my god! I can't believe you haven't heard oh, of this no, one. No, no, no! I have. Okay. Well, yeah, this, this is, is a director's cut, ass. though. It's yeah, it's originally like two thousand and one, two thousand. Yeah, I was gonna say two thousand eight sounds wrong because a friend of mine was trying to get me to play this in like two thousand and two, I think. Mm-hmm. Three. But there's an accordion playing clown that throws darts at you. Yeah, it's it's um like a mystery point and click game right yeah yeah but they totally redid the artwork to look quite striking oh. eh. i mean it's free she looks like she's struck <laughs> oh look at this guy this guy uh, seen better days he's yeah, d-e-a-d dead mimes and guns don't <laughs> usually go together but i had an idea <laughs> that this was no ordinary mime okay yeah is so. there really anything such thing as an ordinary mime no but you know, a mime is a terrible thing to waste. We're going to seamlessly transition to Kent, who has oh, nice, nice mime work there. He has reviewed he's trapped in a fractal case. ridge. Yeah, this it's look at it. It looks so good. This looks like mid-century modern stereo equipment. Yeah. Do you open up the top? It, does, it has like a yes. record player in there, and the front of it. <laughs> hey, remember that 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 concept PC that AMD had that was on a pedestal like that? Huh. Mm. Yes. It, was it, it had the center. It was tall, but it had the. Was that Project Quantum? Was it Maybe. I don't recall that. Project Quantum. Yes, it was. To show you. This thing. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. It was all BS. They had an Intel motherboard in there. The this this external power supply was just an ATX power supply in a fancy looking plastic box. It was all it was all faked. I mean, it wasn't technically fake because they really did have a PC running, but it was an Intel PC at an AMD event. With an ooh, a, was it a Nano? They had one of their Nano GPUs in there. Mm-hmm. This is Fury X era. Yeah, I mean, it's cool-looking design. Like, the industrial design was fine. Gamers Nexus would have a field day with thermals on this, though. I mean... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It had a Fury X in it. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, Kent, you were going to talk about a, a beautiful mid-century modern-looking case design. Yeah, the uh, Fractal Ridge. Um, I got a review sample on it and immediately was struck by... Just as soon as I removed it from the packaging, how well built it was it is just it feels quality. Um, everything about it, disassembly, reassembly, um, you never have trouble, you know, lining up screw holes with it because it's just everything fits so well together. Um, and it, for something as small as it is, which it's a, an eleven point six uh, liter. Uh, enclosure it's really easy to work in um all the panels come off uh basically and it just has one problem and the one problem is that pedestal foot basically 
because it really uh, restricts restricts airflow. Um, uh, specifically, it restricts airflow if you have um, if you, you tr- want to use this uh, case in the horizontal layout. Um, that foot will block airflow completely to the power supply. Um, I actually could not get the case to complete either a 30 minute uh, run of the heaven benchmark or uh, the 30 minute gaming test in the stock horizontal configuration. And it wasn't, a GPU issue. It was the power supply actually getting too hot. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that's not um, good. Because those SFX power um, supplies are so super compact. They're so small. It's Is not it exactly. Like, yeah, all those hot components really, really tight. You need cooling. N- yes. Um, now, in v- in the vertical orientation, uh, the temperatures were actually. Uh, uh, pretty pretty decent uh it still sort of blocks the outlet to the power supply in that configuration um so the power supply does run uh, a little loud um in either in either of those configurations um and you know as we said sfx power supplies uh, it's probably the largest the loudest component in the system uh, mainly because of the, the airflow issue. Now, the thing was, is this case was such a nice, just uh, really almost a piece of artwork in a way. It's yeah. just so well, be- well built. I did some things that I normally don't do. I tested it in a few different configurations, and I tried to see if there was an easy way to, to fix these issues. And the good news is there, there is. Um, Instead of using, instead of using that included foot, I just got some a pair of a set of ten dollar speaker or stereo component feet from Amazon, and I set it up in a horizontal configuration just on top of those, and it fixed it. Um, You know what? That would make it it even more mid-century modern looking. (laughs) Oh yeah, it actually. I think. Are you talking about like spike spike feet? And no, just needed to no, raise no, it up no, a little no, bit more. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> just uh, just well, the ones I got were aluminum, but they have uh, uh, just a rubber base on them, a soft rubber base. But so there's only ten dollars. Um, that sounds with, like a great deal. I think they were eleven fifty. But um, how, uh, well. how much? Oh, how much more space? They're about, they're about twenty millimeters tall. Okay. Okay. Um. So they're, they they actually raise it up a little higher than that foot does, but I just place it in the corners. I actually also the best temperatures I got were when I set it up horizontal with those four feet, but I flipped it over from the configuration that Fractal shows it in, which Fractal has it. Uh, if you place it horizontal, it is feeding air to the CPU and power supply at the bottom. Um, with the GPU taking in air at the top. Um, and I tested it with the feet there. Um, which, uh, what, what should I search for to find these feet? Because I'm finding like rubber that's, nubbins. Uh, oh, they're, feet. Actually, rubber it's nubbins. Audio. They're 1450 now. They were 1150 when I ordered them. Wait, 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 Scroll wait, wait, down. Rub, uh, these? Those right there. Yep. Okay. Okay. So get four of them. But you can save 5% with the coupon. So that's, yeah. that's less money. But um, yeah, and but so you nice. you, I flipped it over, and one of the reasons, because the the two 140 millimeter fans that are included, um, will pull air in and just force it right into the graphics card. Um, so if you flip it over, like I say, this that's not the way Fractal shows it in their manual, but if you flip it over on the four feet with the graphics card pulling air in from the bottom and the power supply and CPU pulling air in from the top. Um, my temperatures were great. And this is a, you know, this is an 11.6 liter case. Like I said, 
but this is a 12600K processor and a 3080 12 gig. So it's it's not like lightweight components in there. Um, and with the four feet, instead of the included foot, the temperatures were absolutely excellent. And even the noise levels were not that bad, uh, considering it's all air-cooled and using very small coolers. So say you only have about 70 millimeters clearance for the CPU you've got, cooler. Yeah, you've, you've really got 70 millimeters. If you're using a, the, I was using an ID cooling IS55, which is a pretty new model. Now it is known that it sort of extends pretty far up to the top of the motherboard. So I did have to disconnect the power cable that oh, runs through and, yeah. um, to, to allow for that. But, that's actually something that fractal lists in in the manual they allow it um pretty it, it's set up so you can do that if you do run into that situation so um, they've got enough lead on that power cable so that you can kind of pull it out more as a pigtail rather than something that's fixed to the frame yes. yeah interesting and that's how i set it up but yeah it's a just a lot of the design aspect of this case is incredibly well thought out um the, uh, there are space for three additional 80 millimeter fans on the GPU side. Um, I didn't actually see much difference when I s- tried that, though. Uh, at huh. the, uh, it, I only got about a, a single degree better on the, the GPU temperatures. And if you're using a wider GPU, um, that's the 3080 12 gig there, and that's a standard width card. Um, and that's a, 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 a for the win three thirty seventy TI. And you can see there's not enough space there for you to be able to use the three fans. Um, but again, I really didn't have much issue. If you're using a card, both of those cards are about two and a half slot. Okay. If you're going for a Y, a, 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 a deeper card than that, um, you will not be able to use the included fans as intake. But if you're using a thicker card, I don't know that you would need them either because the, the fans of the card itself would be closer to the, the inlet. You know, this that reminds makes total me sense. of the uh, Falcon Northwest Tiki a little bit because up in that upper half of the Tiki enclosure, you have two fans which are positioned as intake bringing cold air right up against the side intake of the graphics card. Mm-hmm. But and then it's perforated on the other side too, to allow the pass through for like the 30 series cards and the other designs that yeah. have passed through on them. So, um, yes. And this is, this is the same way. Um, when you put that panel on, it's perforated for pass through. What about 12 volt high power clearance? It does not look like it would support that without a, a 90 degree adapter. <sighs> Yeah, I think you would have to get a 90 degree adapter. um, And I'm still not sure that would work um, just because of the height of the cards. Um, And I I honestly put a hole in the top, have it feed out through the top. (laughs) (laughs) You you could do that if you really wanted to. Um, And I, I don't actually know. Because, uh, you know, I mean, right now, you know, we only have essentially two GPUs that have that connector. And every version of them is absolutely huge. I don't even know if those would fit inside this case um, just because of the, the, the physical size of them. Um, the uh, and Plus the 12-volt. The high power connector would just yeah. interfere. Um, and I think NVIDIA's choices you're, you're, this generation have wreaked a lot of havoc on the enclosure industry because these designs were probably finalized oh, yeah. long and, ago. And there's a whole bunch of NVIDIA graphics cards that are just not going to work in these re- cases. Remember how EVGA was going to put the 4090 12-volt high power on the on end? The end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. Remember how they were going to do that? Remember? Man, that's sad. How'd that work out anyways? Well, it didn't really work out. <laughs> well, they said, the, no, um, no, no, we don't want to participate anymore. No play. Yeah. Yep. 
But um, I don't know that you could really effectively cool a, a, a third or a forty ninety or maybe you might be able to cool a 40 80 but then again you've still got those massive coolers and i just don't think one would fit in this yeah but i also you're gonna have to cut a blower in it i i I also don't think that most people looking at an enclosure like this are really looking at 4080s and 4090s to be completely honest Speak um, for yourself. I mean, <laughs> well, uh, uh, oh, the price point, I get it. This is not some $300 or $400 boutique case. What's, this what, is what is the price point of this case? Oh, my gosh. One this is incredible, guy. really. Much, wow. Yeah. Yeah, today's standards, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that's really Look good. Look at the, I mean, these that's photos, really first of all, this is the thumbnail for this week, period. This is a great photo. But these are uh, yep. just Kent, a nice job on the build. case. And the vertical yep. nice job in the build too. It reminds yep. me of the console size case I reviewed a couple years ago. Similar layout internally to this, and you pretty much had to use it vertical. Those things, even though you can technically put them on their side, unless you do what Kent did and get some aftermarket tall feet for adequate intake airflow, you're not going to want. I mean, this picture from Fractal, it this is cute, but uh, you don't want to run it like this with any kind of serious components in no. it because it is you're no. like he said you're blocking. Air intake to crucial components on the inside of your case because that foot has a uh, solid base up against. Yes. Surprisingly, the base. Kent found out it's the PSU that folds up and dies first. Interestingly yeah. enough, yeah, yeah, it, it completely blocks in that in that orientation. It completely blocks the uh, the PSU. I, I, I even tried to get a photo of you know how that looks unrestricted, and then when you put the foot Jeez. on it. Yeah, that um, looks like 10, 12 millimeters with their stock here? foot. Oh, it's down in the uh, performance section. Sorry, the scrolling is probably annoying. But if you look at it, uh, it's one, oh, one perfect the graphics card. But then at the bottom, the PSU is behind this. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's, there, there's nothing. Yep. I mean, there's a little slot <laughs> there, but. It's and and if you notice, if you here. if you look at that previous photo, it also is blocking the pass through from the graphics card. Mm hmm. Part of it anyway. Ideal. Yeah, the pass through where it's, they it's just typically ideal. are, where the <laughs> where the pass through is typically way out on the end. It's already it's way up. But look, you've got a it. quarter of an air uh, inch of air intake here. Come on, you can <laughs> they could have made that U bracket. Kent, they could have made that U bracket any size they wanted. Yep. Oh yeah. It just needs to be taller. V two will have a taller one. Now that they have all the. Now that they've or, had all the reviewers do the quality. Assurance, you know, testing. if they or had, be if they had sim- here's the if low, they had- low profile, high profile, and one. they'll just no, include high it. performance. It's the high yeah, performance legs. <laughs> if instead of a single piece, uh, for that one large uh pedestal, yes. if yes. they had made that two pieces, one at each end, it would have solved all the issues. Well, the structural yeah. rigidity um, of that would have necessitated Probably. multiple uh, mount uh, points for the foot. Let's let's talk more about your rigidity. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I understand. If you look at the if you look at the bottom, it's kind of that honeycomb plastic where it's getting its strength from these molded. Where did you learn your geometry shapes? I don't know. It's not honeycomb. It's a grid. <laughs> it's a grid. Okay, it's a grid of plastic. Think milk crate. You know, those are kind of strong, right? See, that's well, better. You cut a hole in the middle go. of a milk crate, and it stops performing as well. Although, actually, milk crates are great uh, alternatives to a standard PC enclosure because the airflow is, is really good. It's true. And you can use zip ties. Can't tra- and- are, there, are there photos with your improved or taller feet? No. I, had, uh, I did not include any photos like that for the simple fact that I sent <sighs> Sebastian 67 photos already. Hmm. I only used 64, I think. I think I remember uploading I can't, 64. I told you that was fine, and Sebastian needed the workout. Uh, okay, at some point, <laughs> Kent, uh, and I ran into this problem myself when I was an enclosure editor for the site years ago. At some point, you're almost sending a film strip. Just, it, it's time to start doing video. <laughs> when there's enough photos that I could play 24 frames per huh? second video for like five minutes, it's time to start doing video. And here's this angle, and here's that angle, and here's me holding the screwdriver, and here's me putting the screwdriver. Fifteen degrees. Fifteen degrees. Fifteen degrees. 
15 yeah. degrees. <laughs> Well, I'm well, in, I'm well into the next enclosure, and uh, it's it's not as uh, many photos so far. Oh, can good. You, uh, can, okay. can you talk about it? Is has this been announced or released? Which one is, is it? Secret. It has been. Uh, it's actually a, a case that has been released for some time, almost a year now. Whoa. Okay. Um, it's the uh, Fantex Evolve Shift XT. Um, hmm? And I'm actually XT. streaming on it right now. Oh. And is, um, it, is it aluminium? It is, uh, like all of the Evolve cases. Oh, yeah, and, we talked um, about this. This was from CES I, a year ago or so. Yes. I like the Evolve cases. They're really beautiful do. looking. Yes. And I am actually going to do a closed loop in it, and I'm Ooh. sort of thinking of uh, either streaming or making a video, a time-lapse video of the closed loop build so okay yeah are you going to edit out the points where you get really frustrated and things go flying against the wall <laughs> I, oh, I will come mute on. Them. i will okay. i will mute the microphone uh, liquid is spurting around <laughs> and uh, a fitting that didn't seal it's oh my god it's yeah. soaking it's soaking your power down board yeah that those will be great the one full liquid build i've ever done in my life was for that corsair Hydro X review. And I was terrified the entire time I was going to destroy something. But I didn't. It was great. And I have uh, had multiple components destroyed by leaking liquid all in one liquid cooler. So uh, liquid cooler, I think I would go uh, custom loop before I trust another AIO. Really? To be perfectly honest. Because, I mean, you have total mm -hmm. control. You, have, you can... You can you know, work on yeah, it. Yeah, but that can... means it's it's your yeah. fault when it leaks. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You've got no one to blame I don't but yourself. Feel helpless when I open up the case and say, Oh no, look at all this this stuff is leaked out into it's in this processor. It's it's all over the motherboard. No. Never again. It's like leaking barrel batteries. If you're into old computers, barrel batteries are the death of so many oh. motherboards. But and what are you gonna do? You find some you find what you think is a deal on an old three eighty six, you open it up. And the entire board is just eaten away. There's green acid everywhere. Yep. Uh, basically, remind people that not all motherboards used to have a clock and and CMOS or backed with a coin battery. They used to be little barrels. So that's what he's yeah, talking Yeah, it's like 3.6 <laughs> volts or something in a lithium. Not lithium. Some kind of horrible chemistry that leaks. <clears throat> no, I mean, they were years. liquid acid batteries of some description. And then, of course, yep. there was the Dallas clock chip era. And that's <laughs> another story entirely. Cause not all of those are socketed. And even the new old stock stuff are often dead when you get them. There's an open source project. Did that have like that, but. an orange? Was that an orange sticker on those? They had really tall clock chips. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, no, no these are just all black with a silk screen on top. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you for the review, Kent. Uh, and no check problem. it out at pcper.com. Even with the, uh, the, the um, temperature issues um, in the the horizontal configuration because they could be overcome easily and because of the just the entire quality of the case i gave that a gold award if it had come with oh, feet nice. instead of instead of that stand i would have given it an editor's choice um mm -hmm. without a doubt it was uh you don't hear many cases that small that are a pleasure to build in but the, the fractal ridge was absolutely a pleasure to build in. I, I think they should include per, performance performance U brackets that space that foot out, you know, another 20, 25 millimeters. It, individual feet, it, like Kent did, that there's there's no excuse. Fractal V2, None. throw it in there. Well, they yeah. have an existing foot. I saw his picture where they have that bracket in there. They could easily include a bracket that has a little oh, bit like more distance taller? on it. I mean, it depends on how exactly. it's integrated into the base. Exactly. Yes, as long as it's easy to swap. <laughs> yep. If they could swap that, yep. just a little more. Just give little you some flow, washers. Look, here's flow. an extra long screw and some washers. You know, <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> that's <laughs> a problem solved. You know what? That's the Sebastian, what we're going to call the three cent fix. <laughs> yeah. I mean, go to your local tractor supply that sells those bins of screws and washers by the pound. Yep. And just like throw a handful down on the scale. Like just take it home and tinker. Oh, like you know what? I sense that Duke disapproves. Yes. Okay. Let's move to picks of the week. And Josh is going to get us started. Josh. 
Take it away. Picks of the week. You know, it's just, uh, as we were discussing earlier, monitor prices just keep plummeting. You can get this Lenovo VA based panel, 34 inch, uh, ultra wide screen, WQHD, um, for 299 mm. bucks after the $20 rebate. Nice. It's 144 hertz, free sync. You know, everything you could really want. Well, so 144 is Gen 2, about a 2020 era display. So 2020, 2021. Sounds good to me. Yeah, it's just dirt cheap. 300 bucks for an ultra wide. Silly. Jeremy, your pick this week. Uh, Memory Express in Canada has a really good deal on the WD Black SN770. Their two terabyte is currently 115 bucks off, making it $245, which you can't probably even find on Amazon in the States. That is dirt cheap. Amazon usually floats at uh, just over 300 bucks. Uh, and honestly, down in the States, I don't think it's that much less expensive either. That's only good for, you know, uh, the next day or two. But hey, if you can do it, I would suggest buying it. And so Did does Sebastian see- Furnace. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see Crucial had their P5, I think? Is it P3 or P5? Four terabyte for $258. Yeah, it's PCIe no, 3.0, not four. Well, so fair. you're limited at 3,500, but still, four terabyte NVMe. That's just ludicrous for four terabytes, 259. It was tempting, mm. but I didn't do it. P3 four terabyte up here is 400 bucks, which honestly, that's not bad either. Brett, your pick I'll go. this week. I'll go. Look, when you're looking at, looking around your place and you think you've got, I've got a small live audio problem, this pick is the small live audio fix for you. Don't settle for just desktop speakers. You want to sub with that and you don't want to overpay. This is the pick for you. It's the Logitech uh, G or Z 323 speaker system with sub and oh. each of these desktop Speakers also has a passive radiator behind them. So it's amped and with a with a small sub floor, you know, put that tuck it away in your floor. Fifty six bucks essentially. This is not a blow your ears off sort of system, but if you're looking for a little live audio, you know, don't just settle for a couple of desk desktop standing speakers. Definitely get, you know, spend the extra, you know, ten bucks and get one with a Sub Woot's got this for fifty six dollars. Go take advantage of this. Kent, what is your pick this week? So my pick this week <clears throat> is a case that I reviewed last year. Uh, it's the uh, SSUPD Meshlicious. It's a very small mini ITX uh, with a vertical uh, configuration. Uh, it's a great little case. It's very well built, and it is currently on sale for the PCI 3 version for $89.99 and a $10 new egg gift card. So Ooh. you can get it for essentially $80. Bucks. Um, if you really need to go PCI 4, you can pick up a cable, um, probably $30, $40. So, um, but and if you live in the United a, States, the shipping is free. Is free. Free? What? Free. Must be pretty good then. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving them away for free? For free? Do you remember that terrible commercial? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this was a great little case. Um, it was the was the smallest case I'd ever built in until the Fractal Ridge. Um, and my wife's PC that I did... Uh, built at the end of that review is still in that case and she loves it uh i have no pick this week my pick Shocking. is uh what was it? i thought i had something in mind because it's like oh we can do like a little but it's too late it's too late for last minute gift ideas 
I won't even have this published until probably Friday morning. Woot has two day shipping. You can still order. Can you? Okay. In my region, region, (laughs) uh, there probably won't be any mail or UPS or FedEx or Amazon deliveries over the weekend. That's because they're not brave enough. I don't know. We'll see. We'll. I don't know if we're going to get as much snow as they claim. We're supposed to get like two feet of snow. Whatever happened to that through rain or shine or sleet or snow? Okay. When you live uh, outside of the city, like I do in a township that, you know, only occasionally plows roads, it gets, I mean, it's difficult to uh, traverse. But those little mail trucks, they're, they're wimpy. They need to give them like four wheel drive. Yeah. yeah. Very limited. Put so shoes, chains on them that don't yeah. actually do Husky much. Team. Yeah, the days of the old Jeep uh, flip over uh, mail trucks oh. are long gone. <laughs> now they've just got those little vans. <sighs> Josh, do you want to give us a, a happy holidays oh. kind of goodbye or no? Because I mean, it's been pretty, sure. end of the year. pretty dark lately. End of the year. We this is the twenty two wrap out of up. My face. Go away. <laughs> uh, what about... Happy 2023 is going to be a Happy- better year. Yeah. Do, yeah, do yes. you have the holiday spirit, Josh? Sure. Have you been feeling glum or down lately? Have been people giving you a hard time? Well, that's life. But instead, you can put up some LED lighting in your room and get happy again because you don't have seasonal anxiety disorder. Not only that, but it's Christmas. And you get to eat food. And eat more food. And hopefully, somebody gives you some presents. And that's nice. Because I like getting presents. I don't like giving them away because I'm cheap and cold. But send me all your stuff. So, a Merry Christmas, guys. And a Happy New Year. We'll see you after CES. Oh, too soon. 